Hello and welcome to this beautiful segment of Daybreak Africa, where we ask questions to seek individual opinion on a particular subject matter. I am Bidemi Moses, and today we'll be talking about fuel scarcity, and a whole lot of people are asking the question, uh, is fuel scarcity actually the manifestation of high level of corruption? And my guest for today is a two-time Federal House of Rep member. Uh, he was once the General Secretary of Nupeng, and also is their life patron, life patron of Nupeng. I have Honorable Doctor, let me have comrade to it, Joseph Adelaja in Ola. Daddy, it's nice having you on the show this morning. Thank you very much. God bless you. I'm happy being with you. Amen. Daddy, are you also of the opinion that fuel scarcity is the highest level of manifestation of corruption in this country? Yes, there's manifestation of corruption. But the problem, the root cause is supply. You see, you cannot control the price of what is in short supply. Simple economic theory of supply and demand. Um, the subsidy market is um, a corruption market. Uh, we have seen a lot of things. I was in the oil industry in Nupeng. I was chairman, House Committee of Petroleum Resources Downstream. I've seen all. I've seen round tripping. I've seen uh, supply and removal. I've seen so many. I said it on the floor of the house that look, corruption, I mean, uh, subsidy market is corruption market. When people know that uh, they will not be able to get money, they will control supply. They make sure that thing is in short supply as it is now, you know? How can you imagine people buying fuel at 420 Naira per liter, 500 Naira per liter in this country? Some people are smiling to the bank because government give them at subsidized price, price. 148 Naira per liter. And they so control the supply in such a way that they now sell as 400 between 400 and 500 Naira per liter. Who is taking the money between the gap of 148 Naira per liter to this? Uh, so it has to go from one hand to the other, to another hand to the other. By the time it finally reaches con consumers, you know, uh, the, the percentage increases over 1,000 Naira. So there is corruption, yes. I believe there is high level corruption. The question is who will build the cat? The people to take action are beneficiaries. They are the beneficiaries because who, who will... If the government and the people are determined that the thing should stop, it will stop. It's only government. If you supply, if there is excess supply, if you want to inflate, people will ask you to drink your fuel. You imagine these jerrican marketers. The jerrican marketers, once they are scarcity, you see them along the road. Oh, the black marketers. The black marketers, yes, inside jerrican. Okay. By the time there is fuel everywhere, if somebody is still putting his jerrican of fuel beside the road, will you patronize him? They will go and drink it if you like. So, when they control the supply, reduce the supply, then they benefit from the, the inf hyper inflation that follow. So that is the thing, I believe there's corruption. So now we are to agree that uh, the hike in fuel price now is man-made uh, issue, not actually... It's man-made. All right, thank you so much, sir. Now let's talk about the fuel price. You said uh, the subsidized price is 148 naira, mm -hmm. and some are selling, some are per liter, some are selling at the rate of 400 naira per liter. That means yeah. they will be having their take home or a take home of 252 naira. And mm -hmm. the black marketers, they sell a liter for as high as a thousand naira, mm -hmm. which means they are going home with excess mm -hmm. money on their own. They will be going home with roughly a, a 700 or 800 naira plus. Now, we have this hike in fuel price and commodity in the market is at the brim also. What will you 
profile as a solution to this issue? Well, it is in the hand of government because government is to create the enabling at, at environment for business to thrive. If the create the enabling environment and the refineries are working, then fuel will be will be in in uh, in, will be in excess for everybody to have it. Now that the government is not doing that, who is responsible? Me, I'm a Nigerian, a proud Nigerian, but a lot of things are wrong with us. That the only people that can correct it is the government. This is a country where you can buy a dollar at 395 Naira in the central bank. And you have another market that the government is seeing that is selling dollar for 760 naira per, 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 per dollar. Per dollar. Two some markets. Bank, some banks, banks sell for Two plus. markets and 400, even if it is 435, for example, the gap between 435 naira to 760. Who to allow that market? 350 naira. <laughs> so you don't need to work. If you're a bank manager, you do speculation. Um, and make money and buy private jets. Other people can die if they like. You know? So this Burundi change is all over the world. You get to Great Britain, you get to America, there are Burundi change. Maybe the only difference between the bank rate and borrow the change is 0.03%. So that borrow the change can have money to run its yeah, business. Yeah. But not borrow the change that we have dollar that we sell uh, double the rate in the bank in the same country. So I think you understand. So for those who allow that type of market to thrive are the people that allow this market to thrive, this petrol market. They are the same people who cannot control anything. So that is the uh, tragedy or the irony of the situation. So inflation that we follow, this price hike, can only be controlled, I mean, can only be imagined. Can only be imagined. All right. Um, Thank you, sir. Uh, oil theft is another recent phenomenon that is thriving in the oil sector now. And uh, a presidential candidate said he has already worked in the oil sector before and he knows that uh, the, comp the country produces more than 2 million barrels a day. And uh, the federal government came out recently and said, telling, the, telling Nigerians that we have, uh, we have increase in oil pro oil, uh, crude oil production. And now, whenever they, re they tell us they export oil, then we, the only thing we hear is a million barrel. Now, where is the remaining one million barrel going? And also, how are we tracking the numbers of the amount of crude oil we are producing every day? Nobody is producing 2 million uh, barrels of crude oil today. Let's forget about that one. We had produced 2.4 million, 2.6 million barrel per day before. 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 But now, um, vandalization of pipelines, uh, insecurity in the in the, the Niger Delta, stealing, siphoning of, of uh, uh, crude oil, stealing of crude oil product is now giving us about 1.2, 1.3 uh, million liters uh, production of barrel per, per, per day. So we got what is a uh, two million we are only talking of our capacity, that we have capacity to produce two point something million. Today, 
people are vandalizing the pipeline. They are stealing the product. Government is looking helplessly at these people. And let me tell you, a worker that is not motivated by his employer will look the other way when they are stealing the product of such employer. If our neighbor officers are not well paid and they see somebody that brings hard currency and you ask him to come and uh, arrest crude oil thieves, they will look another way because you are there in Nassau Rock giving instruction. He is there on ground. Okay? And he think about his retirement. Look, as a, as a union man, I felt pity for retirees that, that kill and die on the queue while waiting for their pension. So myself, Comrade Adam Sojomole, who came from private sector background, we convinced the workers to have a contributory pension scheme where while they are working, they will be contributing a percentage of their salary. The employer will match it with another percentage and they will save it in a separate uh, uh, account, no. which they call the actuarians. And so when you now retire, your retirement benefit is not subject to budget vagaries. Because budget, this year could be a good budget, next year may be a bad budget. But when the money is already come there, you just pick your check every month, or your transfer every month. Somebody, they call me now, stole that money. And nothing, nothing happened to him. It's like killing, eating somebody. Because I felt pain in my heart that these people contribute their own money and because they say you are pension uh, pencom uh, chairman to, to supervise the, the, the PFAs, you go and steal the money and nothing happened. I didn't understand. So a neighbor officer that is not sure of his retirement benefit, even the one he has contributed, we look another way if somebody can give him a, 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 a not talking good money that he cannot refuse, not talking good money dollar, I said, so the, 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 the fuel is going. So nobody is producing two point something million today in security, vandalization, stealing has reduced what we are producing. And of this 1.2 that we are producing, we are giving 445,000 barrels to local refineries. So that's why the money that is going to federation account is reducing by the day. And they have to resort to borrowing. 73 trillion debt. Yes. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much, sir. I think I love uh, the way you help us correct uh, some of the trending words by all these our presidential aspirants. And now, Daddy, if I may ask, yeah. uh, do you think putting our refinery in place can be a lifesaver for us? And even if they are put in place, do we have a capable hand to maintain them? We have, we have always had capable hands. They are idle now. They are just earning salary for nothing. When there is no job, no production, and, and they have to earn their salary. Since they have not been sacked, since they have not been retrenched. So we are just paying salary for no work done. So if the refinery works, like you said, it's a plus for us. We have capable and there. They were the one carrying out the turnaround maintenance, I told you at the beginning, before politics came in and government started to award contracts. They Schroeder, you know, a, um, um, uh, a Japanese technology that built the refinery, where they awarded the contract to Tota. French technology and the things cut down just because of uh, politics. I don't understand. So putting a, a, a square peg in a rental in terms of award of contract. They spoil everything. And since nobody is punished, he, the people have so much money that they, they, they have uh, weaponized 
poverty. That during the election, they just give out money and the people eat from their enemy's table. They give big the money they have gotten illegally, they just distribute it during the election, and that is the end of the day. The people will see, bring them back to, to afford that punishment. So that's the tragedy, the irony of, of our situation. All right, thank you so much, sir. And uh, I think this will be my final question because of the time. What do you see as the possible solution to issues we are having in our oil sector? Uh, if you happen to be, if you happen to have a closed door meeting with the presidency, what would be the advice you would give to them and also to Nigerians at large? Leadership. Leadership is the problem. If we have a, a faithful leadership that have human kindness, the situation will be different. And I have a life experience. Once upon a time, in you know, those states, we had a government that believe in using the public fund for public good. And they said, mother and child, they said, trauma center, they said, shuttle buses, they said, urban renewal, you renew the, you renew the urban city with the people by renewing the people. So leadership, I will say it, it was leadership that made Akraja what he is today free education compulsory in Western region in 1955. And here I am today. So it's leadership. If there is a leader in the oil industry that say all these shenanigans should stop, and the president cooperate with such leader in the oil industry, things will change and change for better. It's leadership, okay? So. If you have a leader that you trust, if they trust you, they'll follow you. Another life experience. I was deputy to Adam Soshomole. We created trust, a bond of trust between us and Nigerians. Nigerians obey us rather than the commander in chief. When we say every Nigerian should stay at home, stay at the home. commander in chief will say they should go. That is, I mean, they are doing, the children will be playing football on the expressway. Trust. If people trust your leadership, they will follow you. So if, if you ask me, I will say leadership to create trust and the people will, will follow. But you cannot ask me to tighten my belt and you are my leader and you're losing your own. I cannot tighten my own. So leadership, I may emphasize it. Number one answer, leadership. Number two answer, leadership. Number three answer, leadership. God will help us. Amen. Thank you so much, sir. Yeah. All right, we've had it all from uh, Daddy, and he has explained to us how we can survive in this country that is imbibed with many corruption. I am Bidemi Moses. Until some other time that I will be coming your way once again, I'm staying. Please stay safe, and don't forget, it is 2023. Choose the right leader. Bye.